Okay. Uh, so let us solve a practice question related to the basic computer's configuration. Let us first read the question and understand what is asked and what kind of computation is needed. So uh, give the sequence of computer instructions needed to execute the OR operation in the basic computer. The required operands are initially available in the memory unit and the result of the operation is to be stored in a memory ward. Also compute the total time needed to execute the given operation. So uh, two things are required to be given in the answer. One is the sequence of computer instructions. And you have to calculate the total amount of time needed to execute the given logical OR operation. So let us understand how to solve this kind of questions. So here the operation uh, specified is a logical OR operation. Now, if you recall the instruction set of the basic computer, uh, then you will realize that OR operation is directly not available in the basic computer. In fact, if you consider the logical operations category, then only three operations are supported by the basic computer and complement and clear. And this is the reason uh, why the instruction set of the basic computer is sufficient but not efficient. It has enough number of instructions to execute the basic arithmetic or logic operations but still most of the logical or arithmetic operations cannot be performed directly. For that you have to use a series of other operations to get the desired output. So uh, here also uh, we have the same problem or operation is not directly available. There is no instruction in the instruction set that can directly uh, gives the result of the or operation. So what we can do here, we can uh, transform this logical or operation using and and complement operations in some other form. So clear operation is obviously not uh, useful in this case because clear will simply set all the bits to zero. But if we can uh, represent the OR operation in the form of AND and complement, you can use these two operations multiple times if needed, then uh, the required output can be generated. So let us see how to do that. So I'm starting with the uh, simple logical expression of the OR operation. So let's say I want to perform this A plus B and the result of this OR operation is to be stored in C. Now here as per the constraints given in the question, uh, all the operands, it's obviously a binary operation, so two operands are needed. So both the operands are initially available in the memory unit. So let us assume that A is available at location M of X and B is available at M of Y. The result of this OR operation is to be stored again in a memory word. Let us call it M of Z. Now, uh, the problem is with this OR logic. So let us see instead of OR, uh, how AND OR complement or, or a combination of these two operations can be used. So uh, if we can transform this OR into AND, then our problem can be solved. But to complement the operator, you have to complement the operands also. So let us do that. So what we have done here, this was our original expression. We simply uh, complemented the entire right hand side. So A is complemented, B is complemented and the operator plus is also complemented and has become a dot or AND operation now. So complement is available in the basic computer AND is also available in the basic computer. So this expression looks fine. But there is only one problem with this expression. This expression is actually C dash. If you want to compute 
or of A and B as C, then you must get C as the result, not C dash. So what you can do here, you can again take the complement on both the sides. So complement of complement is C and let us not change anything on the right hand side because now we have only AND and complement operations, invert operations uh, in RHS and that is fine because the basic computer supports both the operations. So this is the required logic. Now the question is how to implement this logic, how to execute this logic. So for that, you have to use a series of computer instructions which are already available in the basic computer. And you have to also take care of the given constraints, like the operands are to be fetched from the memory and the final result is also required to be stored in the memory. So uh, what can be done here? If you look at the right hand side of the expression, the first as this is a parenthesized expression, uh, we have to consider the uh, order of operations. So let us start with this. A dash or B dash can be computed first. Now, if you want to find A dash, what is the instruction of the basic computer that can be used? So uh, we have one instruction, um, register reference instruction, CMA, using which complement can be calculated once complement or invert operation can be done using CMA. So that we can uh, use, but before that, we have to fetch the first operand A from this memory location to AC. So to do so, again, you have to use a computer instruction that is available in the basic computer. So uh, what is required to be done here? First, you need to read the first operand from a memory location to the accumulator. The instruction for that is LDA, load accumulator with the content of a memory word. So here, A will be loaded in AC. So basically, AC will get M of X. So now A is available in AC, so you can directly execute CMA on that. So this will give you A dash. Now the same logic can be used for uh, complementing the second operand B. But the problem is we have only one accumulator register available in the basic computer. And currently it is holding this value A dash. You cannot lose this value because at the time of performing this end operation, you will need both A dash and B dash. So what you need to do, uh, you have to temporarily store this A dash somewhere. So if you again recall the instruction set, you have an instruction STA using STA you can store AC to a memory word. We can reuse this memory location M of X, which was initially having the first operand A. Now it is having A dash. Okay, uh, so now AC is available to use. So you can repeat the same sequence for the second operand B. First load it to AC and then complement it. So currently AC is having B dash and A dash, our first intermediate result is available at this location. Now, if you again have a look at the logical expression, you need to identify a a dash and B dash and then perform the end operation on them. So uh, for performing the end operation, you can use the end instruction in the basic computer. End instruction uses AC and M of AR, the content of a memory word as operands. 
so here we have the same scenario our uh, one of our operands is available in ac b dash is currently in ac and the second operand which is actually a dash is available in some memory location so you can directly initiate the end operation it will uh, give you a dash and b dash the result will be stored in ac by default so uh, whatever logic is available within this square brackets that we have calculated so c dash you have calculated to find c you have to again take complement of the resultant value so for that as the result is currently available in ac you can initiate the cma instruction and that will give you a uh, a dash and b dash whole dash currently the result is in ac as per the question you have to store this resultant value in a memory word and to do that you have to again use a store instruction in the end so this will transfer ac to some memory word let's say we want to transfer it to location z so this would be the sequence of computer instructions to execute the logical or operation now uh, uh, along with this sequence you have to also give the total time needed to complete this process so for that you can uh, simply create one column that shows the number of clock cycles needed for each of these instructions so uh, you have already studied about different types of uh, computer instructions in the basic computer and the uh, their actual execute phase so lda is a memory reference instruction it will take total 6 clock cycles t0 to t5 cma is a register reference instruction so its execution will be complete by t3 that is the fourth timing signal so total four clock cycles are needed for cma similarly sta is again a memory reference instruction its execute phase will start at time t4 and only one clock cycle is needed for completing the execution so total five T zero to T four timing signals will be needed for SPA. Then again LDA, you have already computed six timing signals for LDA, so the same uh, number of timing signals will be needed for this as well. CMA again four end instruction. It's a memory reference instruction, and its execution will be completed by T five. That is the sixth clock cycle. so total 6 clock cycles cma 4 and sta 5 we do not know uh, what will be the addressing mode for the memory reference instructions but that doesn't matter because anyway uh, we have to count the total number of clock cycles starting from t0 to the last timing signal of the execute phase now uh, to calculate the total required time you have to just add all these clock cycles so total 40 clock cycles are needed in this case and this example is enough to show that even to execute a simple logical or operation we do not have any direct instructions available in the basic computer and that's why the instruction set is not efficient